What's up guys, this is Nico from Limitless and today I'm back with another set review. Um, this is not going to be uh, a full set, it's going to be the mini set uh, following up on Celestial Storm, Dragon Majesty. And uh, I think a lot of people give these mini sets way too less credit. Um, especially I think because in the past most of them were pretty weak and mostly consisted of reprints or just not a lot of, of useful cards but i think the last two mini sets which were generations and forbidden light definitely proved that they can release very powerful cards and especially forbidden light with zorak gx um yeah shaped an entire season and will probably still continue to um, shape the metagame of next season so I think it's definitely worth to take a look at um, yeah, this new mini set. Of course, we are once again taking a look at every single card, even um, the cards that normally you would immediately sort out as bu uh, bulk, but let's take a look at them. Maybe there are some gems. So yeah, let's get right into it. First of all, we have Charmander. For two energies, Fire Fang, 20 damage. Opponent's active form is not burned. As I already manage, uh, managed mentioned um, yeah, a few seconds ago, this is just going to be one of those cards that's completely useless. So let's just go right away to Charmeleon, which of course evolves from Charmander, has an ability. Uh, once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may discard the top 5 cards from your deck and attach any fire energy cards discard this way to this Pokemon. Also pretty weak. Um, the ability would be decent in a deck with a lot of fire energies where you and if you could attach to any Pokemon you want but the main problem is that it attaches to itself so let's say you manage to discard four fire energy cards but of course okay you can use flamethrower three energies 80 damage discard one energy it's not good so on its own it will just get Guzmat and KO'd. You lose your energies, you use an ability for nothing. So it's going to be very important what Charizard does, because if Charizard is good, then you can just use the ability, try to protect Charmeleon, which is unlikely, and then try to do something. But the problem, again, you have to use the ability right when you evolve Charmeleon, so your opponent will get a turn of Guzmaring because Unless you want to play Wally in Expanded, but I think that's very unlikely. So the payoff would have to be insanely high to even try to um, yeah, make this strategy work. So let's take a look at Charizard. Ability Resolute Flame. This Pokemon's attack do uh, 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon for each Pokemon EX and Pokemon GX your opponent has in play. Mm, not too strong. And the attack is for three energies, Molten Blast, 130 damage, discard one energy from this Pokemon. Yeah, as expected, it's just, I mean, it has, in theory, a synergy with its pre-evolution, and the ability is a nice gimmick, but even if your opponent has three to four um, GX, EX in play, it's just so hard to set up Charizard, and it's a stage two, and uh, the payoff would have to be way higher. So, yeah, let's move on. Next up, we have Torchic. Uh, Singe, flip a coin, if that's your opponent's active Pokemon is not burned. Classic uh, basic Pokemon attack, nothing too spectacular. And then Combuskin. Ability, Natural Cure. When you attach an energy card from your hand to this Pokemon, remove all special conditions from this Pokemon. Again, ability not too strong because most of the time, if you get affected by an ability. Um, yeah, I mean. First of all, there is no most of the time because uh, there's rarely any use for uh, special conditions. And second of all, we're talking about a stage one and every special condition is gone anyways if you evolve. So let's say your combustion gets paralyzed, confused, put to sleep, whatever. If you evolve it to blazing, which of course is your goal because otherwise you can't do anything. Or you probably won't play Combustion just for its uh, lunch attack, 60 damage with a coin if Tails' this attack does nothing. 
So you get rid of the um, of the special condition anyways. So yeah, once again, just not a good ability. But maybe Blazing can do something so that the Prevolution just doesn't matter. Um, ability Fire Starter once during your turn. You may attach a Fire Energy card from your disc pile to one of your bench Pokemon. That's a pretty good ability, of course. Um, and then for one Fire Energy and two Colorless. Fire Stream, 90 damage. Discard a Fire Energy card to take to this Pokemon, then do 20 damage to each of your one's bench Pokemon. That's not even too bad. Um, of course, it's a stage 2 again. But thanks to its ability, you can, because uh, Blazing doesn't have to be in the active spot to use its ability, you can use the ability to Blazing itself and then attach a double color as energy. And I mean, the tech is fine. Um, but I don't think the card works on its own, but if there's like other fire support, which I think is in the set, so we will get to it later anyways, um, you could technically make it work, especially because it's of course a non-GX, uh, so your opponent also only takes one prize, so if you consistently get enough blazings, maybe it's something, of course for now, just another stage 2 with like a mediocre attack. Um, Next up, Victini Prism Star. Uh, for 2 Fire Energy, Infinity. Sounds promising. Um, 20 times damage. This attack does 20 damage times the number of basic energy cards in your discard pile. Then shuffle those cards into your deck. That's actually a pretty, um, pretty strong attack in a deck that plays a lot of uh, basic energy cards. So, if there is ever gonna be a viable fire deck again, for example, if we compare to la the last two seasons where we had ho the Ho-Oh deck or Volcanion, they always played at least 14, 15, 16, and in some cases even 17 um, basic energies. And if you have 10 of those in your discard pile using a non-GX for 200 damage, sounds pretty good. So um, yeah, if there's, a, if there's ever going to be another fire deck of this kind, Victini Prison is definitely going to be a very good addition. So, for now, I think that's the best card we found. Um, next up, Darumaka. For two colorless, damage rush, 10 plus damage, flip a coin until you get tails. This attack does 30 more damage times the number of heads. I mean, let's just move on. <laughs> um, Damanita, Damanitan, Damanitan. Um, for one fire energy, heat assist, attach up to three fire energies from your hand to, uh, to your Pokemon any way you like. And for 2 fire energy and the color is the aroma salt, 30 damage, flip 4 coins, it takes us 50 more damage for each heads. Uh, I think if the second attack would be fire colorless colorless, so that you can use DCE, um, the attack would be viable as like a non-GX deck with a decent amount of HP to just be annoying and try to win by... Um, yeah, by winning the price trades, but as it's now, for you you will have to attach three energies to it, or maybe use the first attack. But yeah, no, doesn't seem too good. Next up, heat more super singe. Your opponent's active force is not burned. Classic attack, burning your opponent, and then two fire energies, blackening breath, 120 damage. If your opponent's active force isn't burned, this attack does nothing. Yeah. I mean, without the special, if like without the condition of having to be burned, this card seems pretty good, or not pretty good. Let's let's not get too too far ahead of ourselves. But for example, in last year's Volcanion deck, without um, the special rule of having your opponents to be burned, attaching, especially with Max Elixir or Expanded Blacksmith, and then using Steam Up, you can very easily uh, reach very high numbers with a non. GX basic, but the second part just makes the card basically unplayable unless you want to also play Infernape or something to burn your opponent. So the first GX of the set is going to be a Reshiram GX. For one colorless, flame charge, search your deck for two basic fire energy and attach them to this Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. Okay attack. Four energies, three fire and one colorless. Scorching pillar, 110 damage. Your opponent's active form is now burned. Okay, and um, Vermilion GX, 180 damage, you may attach up to 5 Fire Energy cards from your hand to your opponent any way you like. 
Um, yeah, this card definitely has potential with fire support, so once again, that's also a card that depends on what else we see in the set, but just on its own, it's not that good. Yeah, it just isn't. Four energies without acceleration or something doesn't make sense. Um, next up, Litten. Fury Swipes for one fire energy, 10 times uh, damage, flip three coins, this deck does 10 damage, change the amount of heads. Yeah, classic basic Pokemon. Salanded. Call for family, search a deck for basic Pokemon, reveal it and put it on your bench. Another classic basic attack and then for two energies, 20 damage. And Salazzle. Also, keep in mind we haven't seen um, the evolution of Litten yet. I'm not sure if it's in the set, but for now we haven't seen it. It's definitely the full set list, so we will see. Um, yes, yeah, the for one fire energy, flame circle, 20 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is not burned. The defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. Um, um, the problem is, especially with Floatstone being rotated, if your opponent wants to switch, they don't retreat most of the time anyways, they just play Guzma. So you basically deal 20 damage and burn your opponent as a stage 1 without a good ability or something. So for now, also not a good card. And then for 2 energies, flamethrower, 80 damage, just kind of energy from this Pokemon. Yeah, nothing spectacular. So it looks like we are done with the fire Pokemon. So it looks like Incineroar and Terror Cat. I think it's called Terror Cat. The stage one aren't in the set which is interesting um horsey for one water splatter does 20 damage to one if for this pokemon okay um then another horsey which has 10 more hp does for one kyle hydro pump 10 damage and does 10 more damage for each water energy attached to this pokemon okay also not very good and then cedra stage one uh, Hydro Pump, also for color, is 10 plus damage for each energy attached to this bone. So basically the same attack as Horsey, just 20 times for each water, so still not good. And then, of course, last evolution part is Kingdra GX, 230 HP, which is a lot. Um, for one color, Hydro Pump, 10 dead. <laughs> okay, it's once again the same. This attack does 50 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. This Finally is a decent uh, Hydro Pump because it's on a stage 2 um, GX with 230 HP and also does plus 50. So this is already pretty promising. And then for one water, Reverse Thrust, 30 damage, switches from one of your bench Pokemon. Okay, it's need to um, save it from being KO'd if your opponent or forcing your opponent to Guzma or whatever. And then for one water, Maelstrom, GX, this deck does 40 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, okay, let's let's take a look at everything again in detail. So first of all, 230 HP, very good. First attack, okay, but considering that it's um, stage 2 anyway, so we have multiple turns to attach energies, um, we should be able to at least deal uh, 140 damage to GX by attaching a choice band and if we get one more turn in some way then it's already 160 or 190 with choice band so it seems okay but then again it's 190 for three water energies which of course is still good but um, yeah I mean it depends on the rest of the deck but it's okay yeah, then the second attack is just it's a nice gimmick, but not too useful to make the card completely playable. But Maelstrom GX is interesting because it does 40 damage to each opponent's Pokemon. Um, combined with the first attack, you can... For example, we attach an energy when we bench Horsey, then we Rare Candy into Kingdra. Then we can attach another water energy and then we can use the GX attack. Everything is... Like has 40 damage less and then we can attach another water energy so we can basically one shot everything uh, at this point and aside from Galispo there's not a lot of 
insanely strong grass types right now. So Kingdra might have some potential if um if there if there's another attacker or some synergy to Yeah just make it work. Maybe nah. I was thinking maybe Greninja GX, but that would be two stage two, so I mean the card itself seems seems promising. Definitely promising. Um, yeah, next up, Magicka, Water Splash, 10 damage, Flip Coin, Fats, this attack does 10 more damage. Classic basic Pokemon. And then Gyarados, 160 HP. That's a lot. Um, ability, Writhe. Uh, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and is damaged by opponents, take put two damage guns on each of your bench Pokemon. Okay, I, I remember this card. Um, I talked to Philip and Robin about it when we took a like sneak peek at the set and yeah, we all agreed that this is yeah pretty bad. So yeah, and then for two water and a colorless wild tail, 160 damage. You made this card a stadium card in play. Yeah, okay, this card was just bad. Um, next up, Lapras. Um, for one water aqua bullet, 20 damage. Does it take uh, 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon? So classic 20 snipe, and then for three colors, hydro pump 70 damage. Does it take just 10 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon? Yeah, let's say we attach one water and a DCE to set up the attack uh, turn two. Then it's 80 damage turn two, and uh, that's not a lot for three energies. So it's also bad. Uh, total tile, Leah, flip a coin, fetch your opponent's active Pokemon is not paralyzed. That's of course, reminds of Bubble from the old Froki that's now rotated, but uh, definitely a useful, like one of the more useful attacks on, um, yeah, basic Pokemon that still evolve, just to try and protect them, for example. And then Fury Swipes, uh, 10 times for each coin, uh, flip three coins for each heads. 10 damage, yeah. Nothing to speak clear, but Lee's Lee's okay. Um, then Croconaw for double colorless, tackle 30 damage, and for two water, one colorless, sweep away, 90 damage, just cut the top three cards from the deck. Um, seems very strong in the pre-release setting because you can deal 90, but uh, competitive wise, pretty weak. And then Feraligator, downpour, as often as you like during your turn, you may discard a water energy card from your hand. Okay. And then for two water, Riptide, 10 plus damage, this attack does 20 more damage for each water energy card in your discard pile, then shuffle all your water energy cards from your discard pile in your deck. Um, let's say we want to hit at least 160 to make it viable, so we would have to have 8 energies in our discard pile. So we need a way to consistently join to 8 energies each turn. Of course, the first few times, Professor's Letter, for example, helps. But I think it's not even... shouldn't be standard legal. Um, so that's going to be expanded only, but in standard... Yeah, I don't see the card seeing any play. It seems... Yeah, lacks, just lacks the right amount of synergy, like stuff like Battle Compressor, for example, to um, yeah get enough water energies in your discard pile. Uh, Whooper for one colorless ram 10 damage and for water colorless rain splash 10 damage yeah that's not good um and then quagsire ability wash out as often as you like during your turn you may move one water energy from one of your bench pokemon to your active pokemon um yeah i can definitely see this being useful in a water deck but um yeah for two uh, for three colors hydro pump six damage does it take us 20 more damage for each water energy attached to this pokemon I think that's the fifth time we've seen Hydro Pump in this set, so I mean, okay. Um, I mean, the attack is not too good, considering that something like Tapulele, for example, exists. So even if you attach a lot of energies to your Quagsire, your opponent will always have Tapulele in their deck to easily deal with Quagsire, even if they don't have any other good attackers. So this card will have to rely on its ability, but the ability is definitely decent. So if there's a water deck, might be a nice tech. Corsola, Bubble Jet. This attack is 20 damage times the number of water you attach to this Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, it's an interesting attack, definitely, because um, unlike Hydro Pump, you don't attack the active Pokemon. You can snipe the damage onto any Pokemon. But then again, let's say we want to... Let's, let's just say we want to KO Zorua. 
that we need three energies attached to a 90 HP basic. So also not again not too good. Would be would be maybe decent if you can move the energies afterwards, but you can't, so it's irrelevant. Um, then Phoebus ability submerge. If this Pokemon is on your bench, it takes no damage from attacks. Need against uh, some spread decks. If Melotic is any good. Uh, yeah, for one water energy, rain splash 10 damage. So yeah, definitely only useful for the ability. And then we have Melotic. Melotic. For one water energy, Aurora Wave, 30 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. And for three water energies, Aqua Split, 40 damage, this attack does 40 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Yeah, that's that's not any good. So we're moving on. Um Fion, or Fiona. Um ability Ocean Whisper. Your water Pokemon can't be confused. Would be the ability would be very very decent if it would say any um special condition, but it's only confusion confusion and confusion is already one of the weakest um yeah, one of the weakest special conditions, at least for immediate impact, because your opponent doesn't have to attack, or they can just retreat. So, for example, poison immediately does 10 damage, burn instantly does damage, um, sleep, of course, your opponent has to flip. Uh, if they wake up, paralyze, immediately paralyze, but then you have confusion. Uh, I mean, confusion is okay, but I would never play attack card in my deck just to prevent confusion. Um... Wishy Washy, basic Pokemon, ability meter point. As long as this Pokemon is in play, each of your Wishy Washy GX get plus 20 HP and their attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. This is actually a very good card. Um, of course, Wishy Washy GX has so far <laughs> only seen play um, yeah, as a mill deck, as a stall deck, but now Wishy Washy GX might actually be a viable deck. There's Lightning weakness, there's not too much lightning typing aside from Vika Volt and I mean normally Vika Volt decks don't want to take with Vika Volt. But I mean Yeah I think I think Vishivashi, yeah. Let's just ignore the Vika Volt uh, stuff for now, but it seems like a very um a decent deck strategy, whatever. Especially now that Peril City is gone. So, I mean, it's at least going to be a fun deck to try out. That's 100% for sure. If it's going to be a tier 1 or tier 2 tournament deck, that's still up for debate, up for testing. But for now, it's definitely going to be a fun concept to try out. Next up, Trepinch. Um, for one Fighting Energy, Tremor. 20 damage. This attack does 10 damage for each, uh, to each of your bench Pokemon. Nope. Not a good basic. Um, Hydreigon, ability weed out. Once during your turn, you may choose three of your bench Pokemon and then discard. Okay, let's uh, yeah, discard the other bench Pokemon and then for double darkness, one colorless, dark destruction, 120 damage. You may discard an energy from this Pokemon. If you do, discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Um, yeah, that's just a reprint from the um, from the Dragon from Crimson Invasion, which exactly does the same. Of course, it's a reprint. Um, was used in the uh, Sableye Raichu deck that's also uh, featured on this channel. So if you want to see this side dragon in action, make sure to check out um, the Sableye Raichu Hey Dragon deck. And something I want to check is okay. It actually even has the um, yeah the the A next to um, next to the is this set num number in Japanese. I think so. Yeah, of course, in uh, in Europe, we have it on this side of the card, but here it seems like it's on this side, and yeah, it's SDA, so it's just a reprint, so yeah. Um, yeah, next up, Dracini for one Lightning Energy, wrap 10 damage, flip a coin, effects, your opponent's active opponent is not paralyzed. Yeah, once again, paralyzed attack, but this time also with damage, which is interesting. And then another Duccini, which has 70 HP instead of 60 for one water and one colors, tail web, 30 damage. Okay, I guess it depends on if you value, I mean, if the deck is playable, it depends on if you value, um, yeah, the potential to save your basic Pokemon and maybe stall, or if you value the 10 HP. Of course, both have their uh, spots, so yeah. 
It's personal preference. Uh, next up, Dragonair. Evolves from Ratini, of course. For three colors, Dragon Tail, two coins, this is take the six damage for each chats. And for water, lightning, colorless, colorless, waterfall, 80 damage. Just a classic uh, stage one that still evolves into stage two. Just has one super energy, costly attack that does mediocre damage. And then one other attack, I guess. But not too good. But now, maybe Dragonite is any good. So, Dragonite GX, 250 HP, evolves from Dragonair. One Lightning Energy, Dragon Claw, 70 damage. Pretty good already. One Energy, 70 damage. With Choice Band, 100. For Water, Lightning, Colorless, Colorless, Giga Impact, 200 damage. This Pokemon can't attack during next turn. Also a decent attack. And um, for 3 Colors, Dragon Potter GX put 3. I think it's. I think the N means Dragon. Let me see. Yeah, it's definitely a dragon symbol. Okay, you, you can't see it because I'm too far zoomed in, but it's a dragon symbol, trust me. So it means uh, three dragon type Pokemon from a discard pile on your bench. Um, can't think of any too good dragon stage twos, preferably, because that's usually what you want to use these kinds of attacks for. So, it's, but for the first two attacks, Dragonite is definitely decent. Or actually. Actually pretty good, but we have one problem, which is the fairy weakness and Gardevoir, so... I mean, without Gardevoir, I think Dragonite would have a lot of potential, because it's able to deal a lot of damage, and already for one energy, smack for a nice amount. But unfortunately, it's a stage 2, weak to Gardevoir, and yeah, that's... That's sad, but uh, yeah, the card is okay. So, if there's a way to get rid of dr uh, weakness on dragon types, I'm pretty sure there is none. But I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not talking about stuff like weakness policy. I'm actually talking about a dragon type Pokemon that says, for example, all your dragon types have no weakness. If we have one of those, definitely potential for this card. Um, next up, Vibrava. We had Trapinch earlier. Um, yeah, 80 HP for one Fighting Edge, one Colorless, Sonic Edge, 50 damage, this attack damage isn't affected by any effects. So you could use it to, I don't know, ignore the GX attack of Dawnwing's Necrozma, but yeah. Um, that's probably not what you want to uh, use it for. Um, next up, Flygon. Ability Dragon Protection. Prevent all effects of opponent's attacks except damage done to your Dragon Pokemon. And for... 2 Fighting Energy, 1 Cull, Sentum, 110 damage, the defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. Um, unfortunately, it's a stage 2, so you won't play together with Dragonite. Otherwise, for example, if it would be a basic, it would be a nice addition to the Dragonite deck. If there's a Dragonite deck. If there wasn't card at all. Um, yeah, but the card on its own doesn't seem too good. Sentum seems okay, but... Also needs three energy attachments, so yeah. Uh, next up, Altaria. Wait. Okay, no. Normal times are following later, so of course we haven't seen a Spa Blue yet. Um, yeah, Altaria. Stage 1 evolves from Spa Blue, of course. Ability Fight Song. Your Dragon type Pokemon's attack do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. We had this already some years ago, and it was okay, but was lacking a very good Dragon-type attacker, aside from Garchomp, uh, which was a thing back then, but definitely has potential, especially if you think about um, Dragonite, then you could already use the first attack for one Lightning Energy for 70, uh, 100 with Choice Band, and then imagine you have 12 Terry, it's 140 for one Energy, so definitely it seems interesting, so that's definitely a card to keep in mind. And next up, Altaria GX. Um, for one fairy, one colorless, bright tone, 50 damage. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon can't be damaged by attacks from your opponent's GX and EX. Interesting. Definitely interesting. Uh, for one water, one fairy, and one colorless, Sonic Edge, 110 damage. This uh, attack's damage isn't affected by effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. Also interesting. And for one fairy, one colorless Euphoria GX, your opponent's active phone is now asleep, heal all damage from all your Pokemon in play. Actually, actually surprised that I haven't heard of this card or 
that I didn't know about it because this card seems actually pretty good. Especially with the other Altaria, where, because you play Swablu anyways already. You can Bright Tone for easily 100 plus damage or even use the second attack to deal more damage and if your opponent isn't guardable again then you can also use your furry GX for a nice nice turn. Yeah, Altaria GX definitely a very interesting card. I will definitely try this card out once it, uh, once it's released so if it's good enough I will uh, also make a video but that's still up to see. Uh, next up, Bagon. For one colorless risky kick, 10 damage for Bukoyan if Tails' deck does nothing. And for one fire and one water, Dragon Eye, 20 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Uh, classic bad basic. Uh, Shellgun, ability, energy guard. As long as this Pokemon has any basic energy attached to it, damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's attack is reduced by 10. Another pre release card, I would say, but also not too good in competitive play. And then, maybe a card that can justify the other two being bad um, is Salamence GX Dragon type, also 250 HP, just like Dragonite Ability Dragon Lift, the retreat cost of each of, po of your Pokemon is zero Okay, good ability but not on the stage two uh, For one water, one fire, two colors, bright flame, 200 damage, just got two energy from this Pokemon and Flame Jet GX, this is take for one fire, two colorless this take does 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, it has the same weakness as Dragonite, and I would play Dragonite over Salamence any day. So... I would say this card is bad. Uh, next up, Dradigon. Ability, Rough Skin. If this Pokemon is the active form and it's damaged by opponent's attack, puts 3 damage cards on the attacking Pokemon. Also a card that we had um, in the past, pretty similar. And for one uh, water, one fire, one card is Dragon Claw, 100 damage. Um, this is a nice card in um, decks where you switch your basic with an attack to put up to maybe force your opponent to attack into it, but other than that, it's not very good. Um, Zekrom. For one lightning, two colors, shred, 70 damage. This attack damage isn't affected by any effects of your opponent's active Pokemon. Classic shred. And then for 2 Lightning, 2 Colors, Bolt Strike, 150 damage will be coined if Tails this Pokemon does 50 damage to itself. Uh, that's just an attack that would require the necessary energy acceleration and without energy acceleration it's just bad. Um, Curam, Outrage, 20 damage, this attack does the same amount of damage for each damage card on this Pokemon. Um, and for 2 Water, 1 Colors, Frost Spear, 100 damage, this attack does 20 damage to one of your bench Pokemon. Um, yeah, also basically the same as Zekrom, could could have potential because it's a non-GX with a decent attack, but without any uh, energy acceleration this is also pretty bad. Then White Curum GX, uh, for one fire energy shred 40 damage this attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon, again classic shred, and then for water, fire, colorless, enrage blade 80 damage if this Pokemon has any damage cons on it this attack does 80 more damage. Okay, so let's say we attach a rainbow energy, for example, then it's 160, but the energy typing. All of these dragons could have could be so much better if uh, double dragon energy would still be a thing. So I would also say, uh, let, let's take a look at the GX stick first. Uh, for two fire, one water, one color, dragon nova GX, 200 damage, your opponent's extra bonus no burn. Okay. okay. I mean, I hate these kinds of GX attacks because you already deal a lot of damage. Like an insane amount of damage, 200. And then you have. And then your basically GX aspect of the card is that you have special conditions for your opponent. But the point of your GX attack is to take prices immediately anyway, so. The GX attack is bad. Shred is okay. Um, especially if you play something against something like Hoopa. But the second attack would require energy extension or double drain energy, so. Vacuum GX. I mean. I mean, it's still a basic. It, let's not say it's horrible. Let's just say it's not good without any support. Zygarde. Um, for one fire energy, Rumble, 20 damage to the flame Pokemon can't retreat during your next turn. And for one fire, two colorless. 
And Rage Blade, 60 damage if this opponent is any damage card, so just take just 60 more damage. Um, this seems okay, because you can attach DCE. So, for ex if you would play a deck that plays um, fi uh, Fighting Energy and DCE, for example Zoro Rock, and you want to... No. Forget what I say, the card is just bad. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on. Turtonator. Uh, maybe maybe the card can be okay with Altaria support and then Rainbow Energy, so you can deal 120 and then with Altaria's 170, 180. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe with the right support, the card can actually be okay. And next up, Turtonator for f 3 Fire Energy. Explosive Jet, 50 damage. You may discard any number of Fire Energy cards attached to this Pokemon. This attack does 50 damage to each, uh, for each card discard in this way. Um, once again, needs energy acceleration, otherwise it's bad. Um, Drumpa, Dragon's Wisdom, 20 damage, attach a basic energy card from your discard to one of your Dragon Pokemon. And for 3 colorless energy, Hyper Voice, 80 damage. This card might have some potential. Um, as I said, most of these dragons lack energy acceleration and Drumpa has energy acceleration. But so does the Rayquaza from Guardians Rising. Or Burning Shadows, I'm not sure which set. Um, maybe. Maybe Drumpa's Energy Acceleration. Maybe. Um, Jungmo. For one Lightning, Rigidify. Or, or Rigidify. Um, during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to this Pokemon's attack is reduced by 20. And for one Fighting, and one Colorless, Dragon Claw, 20 damage. Okay, bad basic. Um, Guard Press on Hako Hakamo. Actually, I up up until now I didn't know that uh, the stage one of Jungmo and Komo was called Hakamo, -o, but now we know. <laughs> For two colors, guard press, 30 damage. During your opponent's next turn, any damage done to this opponent uh, by attacks is reduced by 30. So basically the same as the Prevolution. Actually, they should have just made it the same name because it would. Would be nice, just like with Kingdra, they all had Hydro Pump, and then imagine all of them, because I already saw that um, the Komo also has Guard Press, so it would be nice, but doesn't help if the cards are bad anyways. And then for Lightning, Fighting, Colorless, Drain Claw, 70 damage, bad, and then, as I said, Komo. Also, this time for 1 Lightning, 1 Colorless, Guard Press, 60 damage, your opponent's next turn, any damage onto the is reduced by 30. And for Fighting Colors, Skulls, Enraged Uppercut, 90 damage if this Pokemon is 8 or more damage cards on it, this attack does 120 more damage. Um, uh, I mean, in theory, this could also be okay with Altaria, because you can smack for 100 and then you get minus 30, so it's very unlikely that your opponent one-shots you, and then you can use Enraged Uppercut for a lot of damage. But I think that's... I mean, these are all like concepts that, of course, are intended most of the, uh, most of the time in the set itself, but just don't have any place in the real meta game because they are just too vulnerable to existing strategies. For example, even to just getting Guzma KO'd your basics because of lack of consistency and stuff. So it's a nice gimmick, but I don't see it as a competitive deck. Uh, Kangaskhan for one colorless fetch draw a card for two colorless headbutt 30 damage and for three colorless one two punch 60, dam uh, 60 plus damage will be coin if fetch this deck does 30 more damage. Uh, this card is bad. And yeah, now we have Swablu finally. After we already talked about Altaria. Uh, one colorless sing your opponent's active form is now asleep. Okay, for uh, the other Swablu with 60 HP instead of 50, collect draw a card and pack 20 damage. Uh, both attacks, um, like both both moon. Wait. Can I move this card? This card doesn't have 60 HP. That's definitely a 5. Okay, so, I mean, let me check the other one. Yeah, this has, this has 50. So both have 50. Yeah, then I would always go for the sleeping one because you'd never want to have your uh, Swablu active to draw a card. The other one at least can put your opponent to sleep. 
But how can you mess up this translation? Hmm. I hope that gets fixed because that might confuse some people. Um, first item card, uh, item supporter, trainer, whatever card of this set is Blaine's Last Stand. Um, you can only play this card if it's the only card in your hand. For each of your fire Pokemon in play, draw two cards. Um, yeah, in a fire deck that plays down its hand, and yeah, I I can definitely see Blaine's Last Stand and Victini um, see play in a new fire deck and expand it. But I think Standard currently lacks the necessary strong fire attacker or fire synergy for these cards to be super viable. But in Expanded, seems very good actually. Well, maybe not very good, but at least pretty decent. Um, next up, Dragon Talon. If the Dragon type Pokemon, this Pokemon tool is attached to, is active for when it's damaged by a opponent's attack, put 3 damage cards on the attacking Pokemon. So it's basically a continuous bursting balloon for half the damage. Uh, I think I think choice band is probably always going to be better. Next up, fiery flint. Discard two cards from your hand in order to play this card. Search your deck for up to four fire energy cards. Reveal them and put them in your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Um, once again. Seems very good in Expanded with Volcanion and stuff because you can discard two cards, get four fire energy and then steam up, steam up, steam up, attach, KO, whatever. But as I said, lacks, lacks the uh, necessary go very good fire Pokemon in Standard right now, in my opinion. Um, Lance Prism Star. Um, you can only play this card if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Search your deck for two Dragon Pokemon and put them on your bench. Ooh. Let me. Okay, this definitely. Let me move this up. We can definitely see that uh, the translation is correct, as in. Um, you, it doesn't have to be a dragon type that gets KO'd, because I was curious, maybe they messed up the translation, and because it's a dragon type uh, tr um, supporter, that a dragon type has to be KO'd. Like Dianta, I'm pretty sure Dianta says Fairy has to be KO'd. But this card's actually with Dragonite? Or Altaria? I mean, you can put Altaria, like the normal Altaria or GX, whatever, or Dragonite just right on your bench. I mean, in a Dragon deck, this definitely is a must. I mean, seems, seems good. Seems pretty good. Um, Switch Boy. Let's just call it Switch Boy. Um, switch your active water Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Then heal 30 damage from the Pokemon you move to your bench. Um, yeah, of course, if you play a water deck and then you have the decision between Switch and this card, you always play this card. But in general, I don't think that's the broken card that makes water all of a sudden the best archetype ever. Um, next up, Vela Volcano Park. Each player's burnt Pokemon remains burnt between turns, even if the uh, coin flip is set. Um, if there's good burn synergy, definitely a good stadium option, especially now that we have so many versatile stadiums, or not versatile stadiums, but... Um, every deck just plays a different stadium now that Peril City is gone. Um, of, if you play Burn deck, of course, it's your stadium to go. But also, once again, I don't think it's the card that makes Burn all of a sudden a super playable archetype. Uh, next up, Zinnia. So, more Dragon type support. You can only play this card if one of your Pokemon is knocked out during your opponent's last turn. So, basically, like Lance, attach up to two basic energy cards from your hand to one of your Dragon Pokemon. Uh, I saw the um, attach up to two basic energy cards part and then I was like please save from the discard file because then the card would be insane but now you will also have to have the basic energies in your hand I mean of course N is not a thing anymore so you can have a big hand um, I mean the card is definitely decent 
Um, I mean, I can I can see this being played with uh, the um, white Kyrem GX because that seems like an archetype where you play a lot of high energies anyways, or like a lot of basic energies. So Zinnia seems pretty good in this deck. Um, but yeah. It's definitely okay card. Might might be might be the dragon support that dragons needed. I mean we have uh boosting damage now with Altaria, we have um boosting uh not boosting um yeah setting up your po uh setting up your Pokemon um faster with Lance Prison. And then we also have energy acceleration with Zinnia. So might be an interesting archetype to look at. After this uh, set re set's released, I mean, was probably to be expected that if the set is Dragon Ma Dragon Majesty, then the archetype we most likely are going to take a look at is going to be Dragon. So, yeah. But uh, so next up we have okay this Rishiram Fuller. We talked about this. We talked about Kingja. We talked about Dragonite Altaria. We also talked about Blaine's Last Stand, Zinnia, Reshiram, Rainbow, Altaria, Rainbow, Salamence. Uh, this is White Grim again. Dragon Talon, Fiery Flint, Witch Boy. Okay, then we also have um, Ultronic Crosma as a gold, um, gold rare in the set. So, no uh, secret rare that's like not in the set already. Um, yeah, I mean, the set, to be honest, the set is definitely better than I expected, because I expected to maybe see one or two playable cards at most, but it's actually a lot of um, interesting dragon type uh, synergy. So, yeah, I mean, once again, I will also um, write an article on Limitless TCG about the top cards from the set. Um, it's most likely only going to be top 5 cards this time, not top 10, because of course it's only like half a set, so it doesn't really make sense to put in 10 cards. I mean, I, I didn't really keep track on how many cards are in the set, but doesn't seem, especially with all the prevolutions included, doesn't seem that smart or necessary uh, more so to include a lot of cards and keep in mind this poor guy is alone but let me i mean I, i'm not really sure what i mean okay it definitely says promo in the bottom corner so this might just be um like a blister promo um maybe the card is not even in the set and it's just here because it seems very weird that it's also like the only one with the i don't know what it means the the Kodomo part, but yeah, it seems weird to be the only inclusion. And yeah, everything else also says uh, Sunny Moon 6A. So I think this lit might just be a promo and not in the actual set, just a holo blister promo, whatever. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the set review. Make sure to also check out the article on Limitless TCG on the top five cards or my top five cards from the set. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.